Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name's Al, and today we have another Blender vs. ZBrush sculpt. Let's dive right in. So if you're new here, I really enjoy view ZBrush for a very long time, but on the left-hand side, we have ZBrush, and on the right, we've got Blender. So Blender is really, really rocking some good stuff. This is my first sculpt that I actually felt confident in, just because I felt like the tools were a little lacking, at least on a Mac. That's what I'm, what I'm working on here, but it felt really, really good in this sculpt. So the whole premise behind this character, this mushroom man, found the concept art online, and I really just wanted to block it out using primitive shapes. My previous sculpts in Blender, it's pretty much all just one shape, remeshing. But as you can see here, I use multiple axes in both ZBrush and Blender of symmetry just to kind of pull out that weird kind of hourglass shape. And in ZBrush, I dropped in a, a sphere or a capsule that I can then use the, the gizmo, use some deformers, stretch these bad boys out, and then the bend curve modifier to really curve those arms around the body. Inside of Blender, I have the mushroom kind of hat, the, the head of the mushroom placed in there. Now I'm working on an arm. So just using your typical brushes, play strips, which is like clay buildup, the move brush, snake hook, all those good things. And I'm just literally going to object add inside of Blender, adding new objects, stretching them around. I know that eventually I'm going to mirror them to the other side. Swap them back over to ZBrush. If we look over there, the eyes are really, really rough right now. One thing you will notice inside of ZBrush is that I have the ability to use spotlight Light, just bring in my reference image right there. And the cool thing about Spotlight is that I can change the transparency. That way I can look through my mesh. And then that's how I was able to nail those proportions. So I didn't know how to do that in Blender. I know I could have pure ref on top of the screen, but that's not quite what I wanted. And I didn't want to learn how. I'm sure I could bring in an image or an image plane inside of Blender. I just, I didn't. I, I know you can. Let me know in the comments below. I know you can, I just don't know how. I'll have to do more research on that. Uh, but that really helped my workflow inside of ZBrush. I wasn't too concerned about it in Blender because I'd already made the character once. I made this character first in ZBrush, then in Blender. Getting that the thigh and the butt cheek looking pretty solid inside of Blender. The eyes in ZBrush are still just kind of placeholders. I knew that they shouldn't be on the front of the head. I was just trying to nail things down. And that's okay. I take my time. The nice thing about using these primitive shapes, I know we talk about it all the time here on this channel, is that you can really just make sure that you nail it, right? You can nail those proportions. This is not the fastest way at all. And most accurate, like if you're going for accurate, this is the way. So if you started this from a sphere and let's say you made the, the whole head and everything's looking good, but then it's like too tall. We can mask, we can move things down, but what if the face was too wide? And then we'd have to squish and pull. This, we can just grab the shape that we want and adjust. And let's check back in on Blender. Look at them butt cheeks. Oh yeah, kind of looks a little flat. Definitely needs to do some uh, Stairmaster, this little mushroom guy. There you go, build up those glutes. Looking pretty good over there. And ZBrush, I am slowly but surely just pushing, pulling, getting those eyes just where I want them. There was no rush in either of these sculpts. That was a weird word to say. There was, there was no rush in either of these sculpts. I definitely think I was quicker in Blender just because I had already done the character before. This is not apples to apples. I am well aware of this, but I was super stoked inside of Blender to be able to use this method. Things are really going great for Blender, and I could not say that three weeks ago. I really couldn't. In 2.92, Blender sucked. And before, it sucked at sculpting. I promise you it did, at least for me. But, you know, things are really catching up, and I'm, I'm thankful they're making changes, especially for a Mac. I am on a Mac, and it can be a hard life out there for Mac users. <laughs> We won't whine too much. I also have a PC right over here. So in ZBrush, the mouth was just being a little butt. Um, it, my geometry just wasn't quite flowing how I wanted it to flow. So I'm using pinch brushes to guide that geometry and I'll press Z remesh just so I can like force it into submission. Sometimes your geometry, your sculpt, your model really needs to be forced into submission and you can do it. Force it, I promise you. Another great thing about ZBrush is the insert mesh feature. I can literally go in here, insert mesh, grab the sphere, and then I can actually change uh, the brush like level. So how high that sphere sits on the surface of that uh, mushroom cap, if you want to call it that. I don't know how to do that in Blender. As far as I know, you can't do it that way. So I added um, one sphere, moved it in position, and then copy and pasted. For whatever reason, in 2.93, um, I'm using industry compatible Blender settings and also ZBrush settings. So things get a little crazy. I know everybody says you shouldn't do that. 
I don't care what everybody says, that's what I'm gonna do. But I had some issues because when I press W, E, and R, it wasn't uh, translate, rotate, scale. Yeah, I had to select it individually, but I am sure everybody, including Flip Normals, will tell me to just stick with Blender. And that is, that's, that's good advice. I will refuse that advice, however. Still consider it good advice, especially if you're new. Just learn how to use Blender controls because every single, like 99.9999% of tutorials are gonna be using the Blender settings. There's like no tutorials using industry compatible or industry standard, so I get it. I'm getting too old to <laughs> learn brand new software. I'm getting set in my ways. So. So it's always fun though, hopping in Blender uh, now that things are working well. So the mouth turned out pretty well inside of Blender. It wasn't quite as intense as I would have liked. Finally getting around to those butt cheeks inside of ZBrush. Poofing out that belly, using that move brush. The beauty of these multiple objects, really great. Obviously, this is nothing new. All right, so let's compare the two. ZBrush was really, really nice inside um, having my reference right there. I just had my reference in Blender kind of on an other monitor. I should have dropped in an image plane to make things a little bit more fair. My proportions are off inside of Blender. As you can tell, the head is a little, like I think the eyes are too high up maybe. He's like got a pencil neck for for too long but that's okay so i learned how to block out inside a blender fantastic this was a really fun sculpt and i hope you enjoyed it know in the comments below if you'd like more of these blender versus zbrush sculpts so i've got a couple more in the works and then i'll probably do some new stuff hey before you get out of here be sure to check out some of my other videos and if you felt like i earned it hit that subscribe button y'all are awesome stay that way i'll see you next time